Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Unix and how you can version your your profile configuration on your terminal and any other things that have a specific folder. We're going to start working with symbolic link, which creates links uh, on folders and files. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos that I go over the basic commands and how you can redirect logs and kind of thing, I'm going to be posting the, the video for you to follow up because they're important for you uh, to understand uh, these because we're going to be using these more, more and more often along with more advanced stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And let's start here. So a quick recap was that we created a we are using bash right we are using bash here let me clear here and we have a bash rc file right so i'm on the qa ops folder but if we go to the home we have a bash rc file with some basic alias nothing much just uh four or five alias right so let me go back to the qa, QA ops using the alias and we have uh i would like to version this because whenever i'm on a computer whenever i'm on a, a a new computer i would like to have access to my alias i don't want to every time i have a new computer or, or I install my os or, or i got a new computer i have to type all of those it makes no sense so how you can have that versioned and configure at at your terminal at the same time right so it, it resides on a very specific file, which is a bash rc file. I'm not going to version that, uh, right? I would like to version a, f a full folder, and I'm not going to version my whole home. Make, and, and makes no sense, right? So uh, how can I do that, right? So the first thing is, let's create that file elsewhere, right? So I have a, a QA ops here. I'm going to start using the commands that we learned last, last, uh, last video. So I'm going to, so let me clear this up here, make this a little bigger. Let me create a folder. I'm going to say uh, terminal profile. I'm going to go into that folder. I'm on the terminal profile folder. I'm going to create a file, right? We already have the bash RC, right? And I, I would like to do that. So what I'm going to do, use that same file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the bash RC to my current folder. So it's CP, right? This is the 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 tilde command, the tilde sign that it's on my home. I could also type home, doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever is easier for you. And bash RC. Remember to use the tab. And I'm going to paste it where, wherever I am, right? And I'm on this folder already, so I'm going to say I want to paste it here, and I use here a dot. So if I do LA, it's already here, right? But I, I don't want this to be a hidden file here. I want to be an exposed file. So I'm going to rename it bash RC, and I'm going to say this is going to be my alias. Right, so now I have a file here, aliases, that has uh, all the things that we created. Now, what I can do, I can open my bashrt and source this specific file. I don't have to host those aliases exactly there. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my home. And I'm going to open my bash rc file. And I'm going to delete everything. Just delete it. Right? So um, I'm going to leave the terminal and I'm going to open again. I'm going to go to my home. right? And now I'm going to open the bash rc file. There is no alias. Nothing is working, right? Because we just deleted it. I'm going to edit here. I'm going to use VI just because this is going to be a quick ad addition. I don't actually need to type a lot. So one of the things that we need to do is get where is the file that we created, right? So we created the file exactly here. So I'm going to use this uh, just to make it easier. And the folder was terminal setup profile, right? I'm going to do PWD and I'm going to copy this, right? The whole path. 
and I'm going now to open my bash rc file. So I'm going to, although I'm on another folder, I can pass on the whole path. I don't have to enter that folder. I can, I can edit, I can delete it as long as I give the whole path. So there is nothing here. We learned that we can use the source command to source uh, a file into my into my terminal. So I'm going to paste everything here and give the name aliases. That was the name. I'm going to make this file this file a little bit better because I don't need to put my whole home, the whole folder. I can I can just put the home, right? I'm going to relieve the file and edit the file. I save the file. I'm going to source. So I have nothing here still. So I'm going to source the bash bash C file. Now I have my alias. I can go to I have LA, I have LL, I have uh, resource, I have QA ops, right? Great, let me go back. So now I can I have my alias on a specific terminal, a specific folder, and I just need to version that folder. Right? Any changes that I do on my aliases, I can just uh, add and commit and push. And on a new computer, I just need to clone that folder, right? Download that folder and source. That, the, that file on my profile and all my aliases and everything that I have is going to work. So this is one way is you sourcing a, a file from your bash RC. So there is another way which is to create a symbolic link and this is very important because now we're going to learn how to create a symbolic link and a symbolic link is a link to a file or to a folder and there are various usages of it and it, it's amazing, I use it a lot. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything that we did, right, and uh, we're going to start again. So I have my alias here, right, so this is my aliases. I'm going to uh, rename this file aliases just because uh, I'm going to be use a symbolic link, right? It makes more sense that file to be named differently. So what I'm going to say is MV alias is to a new name, which is going to be profile. Just because I'm going to be using this not only for my aliases, but for my whole profile. So I have profile here. I have the same things there. I'm going to delete my bash rc right? I deleted the bash rc let me see if I have anything else related to bash rc there, no I don't have anything else, great I'm going to exit and open bash again so I'm forcing reloading uh, I don't have any any alias anymore right? Uh, I still have my terminal here with my file, I don't have ll but I have the whole command. Great, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this file, create a new file called bashrc and point to this file here. So the name of the command is ln. So if I do man ln, it's for creating links, right? And you give it a source file and the target. So this is the file that the original file that has the actual content and this is the target where you're going to be uh, where it's going to be linked to right and we're going to be using the, the uh, dash s which is for creating a symbolic link so remember i'm on ln source and target right source and target this is my source and my target is my home so I'm, and I need to give the full path. So what I'm going to do is ln dash s for uh, creating the symbolic link. The whole path to where I am is I just going to copy here. You can use pwd dash terminals profile profile right. This is the this file here, and I'm going to say where I want this to 
be linked to, right? This is where I'm linking from. This is my original file. And I want the target where it goes, is going to create the actual link. And that's going to be on my home. And I'm going to give it a name. It can be any name that I want. Doesn't need to be the same name. And I'm going to give it the name of bash RC. That's great. If I open here, there is, there is nothing here. Right? But if I go to my home and I do ls-la because we created a file with dot, which is a, a, a hidden file, the bash rc it's already here. And you can see that the dash l shows me the whole, uh, shows me that this is an actual link. It's a bash rc pointing to this file here. Right? So if I do if I do cat bash rc, if I do cat bash rc, it's actually pointing to that file. If I do if I open the file, it's actually going to open the file out there. So right, so I can source now my bash rc. I now have my aliases, right? And I can go to my QA ops and I can go to my terminal. I'm going to open this with code just to show you exactly what I mean right so this is this file open here I'm going to create alias and I'm going to say uh, open profile and what I'm going to do is or show profile and I'm going to say cat bash rc so I sometimes I don't remember what is on my profile I don't want to open and, and go and, and open on a different file, just wanted to print it on my terminal. All right? I'm going to save this. And what is interesting is that now that I that I can open, let's let's now where I am, I let's go to my home. I'm going to do cat on the bash rc. We created the file on the profile, the original file, right? But I'm going to cat the bash rc. And my show profile is already here. I just need to source the bash rc again. And now I can do show profile. And it's there. So this is another way where you can do the symbolic link to a file. I can create a symbolic link to a file to a folder. I'm not going to, we're not going to be using a folder right now. I'm going to be using that at uh, some point in the future. Uh, but right now, what I'm going to do is how you can actually use these like uh, on a daily basis, right? So a lot, uh, uh, we can version, we can use symbolic link to version different different stuff on, on on our jobs, right? And when we are dealing with binary files, you can have multiple binaries and use symbolic link to point to that specific binary. Let's say you are you are installing something on a server, you want to have a specific file. Uh, and you can always have a symbolic link pointed to a specific binary file, right? And if you have a new binary file, you just need to uh, use another, uh, create a symbolic link to another uh, binary file, and that's going to always be the same. You, whatever you're doing can point to the link, and the link's the one that uses that. So how that, that looks like? So what I'm going to do is... Uh, I have here a few symbolic links, a few files that I created. This is not a link yet. So this is a jar file application one. And let's see the content. I do Java, Java-jar in application one. And it's going to print hello world application one. And if I do application two, it's going to print hello world application two. So I have two different binaries, two different jar files, right? What I can do is I can create a symbolic link. Remember, uh, source and target. And the source is application dash application one. And the, the target is application. Let me put just java.jar. Okay. So now I have a symbolic link called java.jar pointing to application one. If I now do Java jar execute the Java jar file, now it's pointed to application one. I can create now, I can change that symbolic link to be 
to point to Java 2, right? This is going to give an error saying that that symbolic link already exists. I'm going to put an extra option called F for forcing. So it's going to override this specific symbolic link. So now when I do when I list, now it's pointing to the application too. If I do Java jar the Java file, now it's pointing to the application too. So I can have multiple applications here, multiple jar files application here, but whoever uses those doesn't need to, doesn't need to know about it. It can it just need to know about the Java jar. As long as the Java jar is pointing to the correct or to the most up to date version, that's going to work. So let's say uh, you have another application in your Unix or whatever you, you're using that needs one of these two, right? And now you have a new version. You're going to have version three, and now you're going to have to open that whatever you're using to point to application three. You don't need to do that. You can just have it point to the Java jar file, regardless, right? And whenever you have a new file, you just come come here, create a new symbolic link for the Java Java jar file to point to the application three, application four, application ten, and whoever is using the Java jar. It's going to be the same. You don't have to touch it. So, and if there is a problem, let's say you come application three gives an error, you just need to move the symbolic link back to the application one or application two, and that's going to be perfect fine. Right? Cool. So that's basically what I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And in the next video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about uh, shell and, and how you can watch logs and, and look at uh, how we can monitor a specific command and having that command being executed multiple times, how you can watch a log while it's being printed. And we're going to be writing our first shell script. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.